Hello again! We have got some news in between jump misses this time, and it's another Mulcharmy monster. This one is Fuaros. Fuaros is absolutely adorable. We really, really like this little dude. And it confirms the suspicions that we all had, which is that there's a Mulcharmy archetype rather than just the Perulia. Where Perulia cared about special summons from the hand, this one cares about special summons from the two decks. And that suggests to me one more that cares about the Graveyard and Banishment. Maybe they do two more, one for Graveyard, one for Banishment, but I doubt it. There, there's discussion on, like, should we do an Earth one and a Fire one, maybe, and try and have four, but I don't think that that's going to be the thing. Especially since, like Perulia, this one says, if you control no cards, you can discard this card and apply these effects for the turn, and then you can only activate one other Mulcharmy monster effect the turn you activate this effect. So something about Perulia that a lot of people didn't pick up on, and it applies to Fuaros as well, is that you can discard two of them, and they stack. So if you discard two Perulias, and your opponent normal summons Snake Eye Ash, you just put a greed, you just draw two. And then Poplar comes down and you draw two more. And then Diabell Star comes down and you draw two more. It would be great. Fua Ross here, similarly, would work that way. It would be two per summon, and even Maxi can't do that. That's pretty cool. That said, you can use Fua Ross and Perulia, and now you'll draw a card every time they summon from the hand or either deck. That would lock you into two out of the three, and that's why I think that there's only going to be three total and not four. I think that there'll be one more, that it will probably be fire, and that it will probably be like a hamster or something. Like it'll be land-based, where this one's air-based and Perulia is water-based. It might be earth because it's land-based. We could do that too, that would make sense. Um, but that they'll all say that you can only use two out of three of them, so there will always be one spot that they can special summon from without letting you draw. Similarly to the other Mulcharmy, it says that during the end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards they control, plus six, you have to shuffle from your hand into the deck that many cards so that you're at the number they want you to be at. Um, that means if they have three cards on the field, you're only allowed to keep nine. So if they special summon from the extra deck 25 times and you draw 25 cards, you're gonna have to put back 22 of them. <laughs> but um, if you start discarding hand traps and stuff, you don't have to put back nearly as many because you're shrinking your hand all on your own. There are some really cool implications that this thing has. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of people are saying that this is just like the new Max C, and that's a pretty limited thought process, I feel because there's a lot that this is doing a bit differently. First and foremost, it can stack, and also, it's not counting summons from the graveyard or the hand, just like the other one was only counting from the hand. And Maxi counted everything, and that is a difference that does matter. More importantly, you have to control no cards. There have been a lot of people championing Maxi, especially before Master Duel showed them why they were very wrong. The thing that most people kind of overlook is that Max C, while an unbelievably healthy defensive card for the game, something that kept stuff like Fire King Cosmo out of the game in an era before we had tons of negates or hand traps, also was just a way to guarantee a win going first. The biggest thing about Max C is that offensively, when you're the starting player and you have max C, it raises your win rate more than almost any other card. Obviously, if you yourself just get interrupted by tons of hand traps, you have a max C to try and get yourself another turn. But if they don't interrupt your board and you build one, max C in their draw phase says, if you don't break my board, I win. And if you do break my board, I still win, because you're going to draw six cards while they try and do it. These Mulcharmy cards do not offer that same interaction that made Maxi such a problem. Maxi would let me draw six cards to insulate my board, Mulcharmies can't even be used. Going first, they're unusable, and going second, they don't allow me to have this 30 card hand unless you have a 24 card board, which is obviously impossible to do. So they try to give you that same defensive counterbalance that Max C provides of drawing into your hand traps, digging into your deck and punishing your opponent for building a deck that is just all gas and no breaks. 
and the incentive to build a more stable deck, where a tier limit player getting max seed could just end on Kid Kalos and Sullyek, a lot of other decks don't have that kind of stability because they're just based on pushing and pushing and pushing, and Max C does a good job of keeping those very pushy decks in the box, but it's doing so at the expense of a healthy game in the OCG and in Master Duel that the TCG was just like, we can't, we can't let Max C just ruin the game for so many years. These Mulcharmy cards offer that defensive, healthy stemming of the tide that Max C supposedly provides and does when used with innocent intent. But when someone with even a lick of evil in their heart gets their hands on Max C, it does an awful lot of stuff that makes it better off banned, and none of those things can be done with the Mulcharmy monsters. I would love to see them print the third Mulcharmy monster in Supreme Darkness and forbid Max C. And I would love to see Master Duel print all three of them on the same day and forbid Max C as well. To find out more about cards that are in Rage of the Abyss, you can go to yugiorganization.com or you can check out our Twitch streams at twitch.tv slash yugiorganization. <laughs>